Hi friends, this is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. So Apple's having trouble with manufacturing its Vision Pro. That's a new goggle thing. Uh, let's jump in. We got a lot of details in this. I want to take a look at this together. So headlines, Apple forced to make major cuts to Vision Pro headset production plans. And initially it was saying um, they wanted to put out a million of these units uh, in 2024 because they were saying it was launching early 2024, but uh, that's not happening. Also, too, if you guys remember, we were talking about this thing. Um, it's a $3,500 headset. Yes, you heard that right. $3,500. And I feel like the only person who could afford it would be uh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> if you don't know, it's crazy. She's um, on uh, on tour. And I guess they were saying, here they're saying making more than $13 million a night. But I think that's gross. I don't think that's actual at her profit. But it's still a lot of money to bring in. Uh, they're charging $254 a pop. And I, I think that's the average price. So I'm sure some of the tickets are going to be much, much more. Maybe some are less, um, but uh, it, it is is pretty high. That I guess you'll make a billion dollars. So, <laughs> um, and, and it's interesting because um, the other headlines today, which we'll get to the Apple's in a second, uh, is that Tesla and BYD are still manufacturing and selling cars. Um, but my understanding is uh, regarding Tesla, they're still making more cars than they can sell. Um, and they aren't on a growth word trajectory. Now, the reason why I'm showing you the Tesla chart and then also talking about Apple at the same time is to understand that sort of the market is very optimistic about, you know, companies and how much profit they're going to make. Because it's kind of weird. Everything just keeps going up. And you also, too, have interest rates going up, which is which is a bit odd, uh, the way things are pumping. So um, my if I had this, you know, guess right now, I would say Wall Street will react sourly uh, that Apple is not necessarily going to make its production goals on the headsets. Who knows what they're going to sell on these things. But let's go through the uh, details here. So um, this is kind of about the Vision Pro and... Um, Let's see here. They've been working on this thing for seven years. I, I didn't realize it was that long. I mean, it's been rumored for a while. This, you know, seven years is, is quite a bit. And uh, I guess uh, there's a problem. They're saying with the manufacturing process. And um, the, the other thing too, the other big news is that they're all also working on a more affordable version. So I think this is interesting. We have more details of that, but um, this is going to be expensive version, affordable version. Um, so it was we'll see early next year. Uh, which is a bit strange because they did announce it on uh, June 5th. And um, it's interesting because that kind of thing could be, you know, kind of to appease Wall Street and investors and stuff like that or, or the board. Uh, so they announced it pretty early. And uh, they have a contract with this company called Luxure for manufacturing. Um, and they're going to make fewer than 400,000 units. Uh, so this is in, this is where the numbers get a little bit dicey because... Um, uh, depends who you ask, and, and uh, they have multiple sources. That, um, uh, and this is the Financial Times who is reporting this. Um, so one of the so basically what we're saying is one of the one of the uh, uh, manufacturers that Apple's working with is saying that they got you know less than a few hundreds what they're going to make. So that's you know less than half of the original. And then and then a couple of the other uh, China suppliers are saying uh, they're only getting orders for like you know for components to be around, maybe around 130 to 150 thousand units. Uh, if for 2024 in the next year. So uh, so this would say then suggest that the manufacturing, instead of the million that Apple wanted, they're only going to make around, say, 130 to 400 in that range. So you're looking at, um, you know, smaller, what, you know, 15% uh, of what they originally wanted, upwards to 40% of what they originally wanted, right? Assuming that Apple wanted to make a million uh, in 2024. Um, more details, which is really quite interesting, is um, Apple is now over 3 trillion. Uh, market cap. So uh, if I had to guess, you know, this is sort of the bubbly top, um, you know, it's like reaching all time highs. And when you get this kind of news, I just don't think it's going to be good news. I, I don't think you could read that as positive that they're not going to hit their production goals. Um, the thing I thought was interesting is that uh, Apple, uh, they're talking about the micro uh, OLED screens or OLED, however you want to say it. Um, I guess it was Sony and uh, Taiwan Semi, this is yeah, Taiwan Semiconductor, um, they were making these things, and um, the 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 thing I thought was interesting is like it's really expensive to make, and they got to make sure that these things are are they're saying here free of defects, um, but uh, they, there's no comment on them because basically what you can do if you want to investigate like okay you know how many are Apple going to make you just go to all the manufacturing companies of like how many lenses did they order right how many you know wirings and how many CPUs et cetera right you, you get my point you like you go to the factories that's how you get some numbers in this that's why there's different references. But the interesting thing is, is that um, for the high-end design, that's the 3500 version, Sony and uh, Taiwan Semi are going to be making the um, the lenses for that. But then for the cheaper version, which is really interesting, um, I guess Apple is going to be working with Samsung and LG uh, for doing this. Is saying for the second generation headset, and that's probably going to be the one that'll be the bigger seller. Um, and, and, and you guys know this. I mean, Samsung, LG make quality screens. 
Um, so it's fascinating that the, you know, more premium ones are going to be from, you know, Sony and Taiwan semi bit. Cause I, I would think we kind of reverse, uh, or, or maybe what it is, is that, um, they, you know, just talking about business, maybe Apple didn't want to leak their technology to Samsung and LG because ultimately Samsung and LG are going to probably make a similar kind of device. And I can tell you guys, I'm here in Korea. Koreans are serious about tech. Uh, Samsung LG are legit companies, and um, I'm sure they'll make some sort of comp competition. They're not supposed to steal stuff from Apple, I, as you know. Uh, but uh, these kind of companies, Apple steals from other companies, and, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, it just happens um, how they magically kind of copy each other. <laughs> so, but 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 I have no proof of these things. I can't say anything like that. But you guys get my point. Um, it's it's always been a thing though. Like um, it's interesting that Apple has uh, you know competitors making stuff for them. So anyway, I just want to throw that out there that that uh, there will be a mass market version of this device. Now there was an interesting chart here um, that this was showing uh, adoption. Now according to some analysis, so this is from uh, Canalis, and you know it's anyone's guess how many headsets are going to sell. But they're making the case that um, after five years the headset will have a base user or user base of 20 million people. So I'd be curious if you guys think that it is a reasonable estimate. So in the first year, the you know, first and second year, maybe a million people, you know, they need between years three and four, which I guess is going to be the big jump. I would maybe, you know, three to nine million. And then, uh, then you get another 10 million added. Or actually, sorry, sorry, 3 million added from a year four to year five to 12. So I don't know where you're getting this 20 million in five years. I mean, according to this chart, that would be more like six or seven. So that's kind of, unless they're just thinking there's going to be a big boost after year five or something like that. But, um, and the, the interesting thing is you can compare it to Apple's other adoption to where like the iPad did pretty well. You guys can see this here. Uh, same with the iPhone, like, so, you know, there's different ad adoptions of, of, you know, tech. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with pricing. We're really frank. And, and also it was interesting because the, um, I was reading through this and they were saying basically, uh, this is a, mainly a manufacturing issue. It's not like they don't have enough software to go on it. Because sometimes you wouldn't launch something like, for example, uh, video game companies will, will launch a console. There's not enough games on the thing, right? So I don't, it's not a problem of software or applications for, for Apple's headset. It's a problem of, of purely manufacturing. Um, and the other thing, too, which I think is interesting here, is um, evidently uh, LuxShare, so that's the company that, that sort of the, one of the main manufacturing of, of this. I think they're the ones who assemble all the parts is, is what it is. Um, they were like wanting to build 18 million units a year, sort of like what they think. So I think for people over luxury, they think this is going to, where they want it to be, obviously, to be a big hit, uh, the Apple headset. So uh, I'd be curious if you guys think that the Apple will eventually be like, you know, crazy mouths. But again, the analysts are saying uh, the, the user base will hit 20 million in like five years. So, so we're still a long ways out from this headset thing. And, you know, we're, we're talking about Apple's at a $3 trillion valuation. Just mentioned that it, it's been doing really well. And I was looking at the stock chart here for those who are interested in this thing, um, because Apple is the market. I mean, it's such a it's such a major company and part of a market. And it's it, I find this year to be so odd that it's, that things are pumping the way that they are. Uh, but it is what it is. Markets be crazy. Now, if you were to just look at the 200 day moving average, which is right here, right? You can see here, and you also have the uh, 50 day moving average. But this would suggest that um, you know maybe you're going to uh, have a baseline support. I can just see right here. Let's draw it out there, like. Of around you know 160 170 we're currently trading at 193 um i personally would expect uh, some kind of pullback sometime that would be my guess um you know it, it, i mean i can't predict future 100 but that's you know what would be my guess because uh, you got a pe of 32 is what we have right now um also too if you to ask the robots you know what's a fair value for apple they're saying 131 uh in this market who knows because you know not everything trades fair values you guys know uh, when you take a look at something like tesla um, but I do want to point out, because that, that one's been overvalued for a long time, but I do want to point out, though, uh, historically, and this is Apple, you can look at this as uh, a 10-year chart of the history of the PE, uh, essentially the multiple of what Apple has been trading at. If you don't understand that, it's basically what is the price of the stock compared to how much the company earned. But it's just a good way to think about it. if if we are indeed buying companies by how much money they make, essentially, which is, it should be a pretty standard thing. Um, so between, like, you know, like you guys can look at this chart here. This is a 10-year chart, so, like, between 2013 and say 2019-ish, right? So like like a six year period here, Apple traded between a 10 and a 20 multiple, okay? A PE of 20, uh, between 20 and 10 or 10 and 20, I want to say that. Uh, we're currently trading in the 30s. And so traditionally, you know, we're trading a bit high from 2021 to 2023. Apple's valuation has been a bit rich. You guys can see right there uh, for yourself. So, you know, my estimation would be that there should be pullback uh, because, you know, we have the, the Fed uh, raising rates 
and also too we 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 have you know a slowdown of production is not going to be as good. Um, I I also think you know, and I've mentioned this several times. I think it's going to be tough for these kind of companies going forward. Company like Apple is that you know where are they going to sell phones and, and and products because you have a couple problems. You know, China slowing down, so they're trying to push uh, into India. Um, the other thing too, the the economy. Um, you know, are are people going to be like, hey, you know, I really want to buy that new phone, or are they going to be like, yo, <laughs> uh, food is too is too too expensive and fuel is too expensive, et cetera, like. Like how much money do people want to allocate to phones and how often? Uh, I'm just telling you, uh, for us in this household, we don't upgrade every year. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think you can upgrade your phone. You know, you could probably wait three years, maybe even four years, right? Some people, uh, you know, write in the comments, are you are you upgrading your phone? You know, every five years, or whatever. I'm mean, like, what what is the interval as you upgrade? And I think these companies always have a challenge. You know, the way Apple does it, they do a TikTok kind of thing. Uh, where it's like every other year is really if you're going to upgrade, so be that every ever um, you know every two years essentially. Um, but the headset w- 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 was uh, something they're really uh, trying to push a million units, but they're they're really not going to hit that goal is what it's looking like. Um, so that's the news. I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts on this one. Uh, please share, and I'll catch you in the next video.